All right, let's uh, let's dig in. Um, so we've been kicking these off with introductions, and I think people have dealt with uh, all the change that they care to handle right now. So uh, we'll stick with that. Um, tell the people who you are and what you do. Okay, my name's Amanda at Cianella, and I own Framezilla, which is a custom frame shop in Pittsburgh. We have two locations, one in the Strip District and one in Point Breeze. Right on. I've definitely, I've been to the, I've been to the Strip one. I have not been to your Point Breeze one. Oh, yeah, um, it's fairly new, a couple years. <laughs> I, I like that, a couple years. Um, <laughs> so... Even though these interviews have like revolved around a bit of a serious topic, uh, authenticity is still paramount. So for us, that means drinks. So <laughs> here's to that. Um, I'm not sure how many people out there are actually aware of what all goes into custom framing. When I came to your store, I realized like very quickly that I was like woefully over my head. Um, <laughs> you want to go in a little deeper into like your services and what you specialize in? Yeah, sure. I mean, we get that a lot. People um, call or email all the time and they want to get something framed, but they've never done it before. So they don't even know what the process is. Um, but typically you would bring your piece to us. And luckily that's what we're there for is walking you through the whole process um, and giving you advice along the way. Everybody that we have working with us are artists and they have, you know, pretty good eyes for design. So um Pretty much it's bringing your piece, whether it's a canvas or a painting or a photograph, and then we sort of help you to figure out, is it going to look better matted or not matted or, you know, right into the frame or what type of frame and if the frame that you might like is too big or too small or what. So, you know, we just kind of walk you through the whole thing and then you would leave the piece with us and it takes us about two weeks and then you pick it up when it's finished. But like one, one main thing or difference between custom framing versus uh, like a frame you might get at Michael's or ready-made frames is that um, everything in a custom frame shop is archival. So it's all conservation quality. So it's, you know, something that's going to last and stay in your home for as long as you want it to pretty much. Right on. I actually didn't know that. Um... Well, uh, it sounds like the process to begin like wading back into corporate corporate normalcy isn't far off. I guess we're about to be like yellow now. We're a yellow county. Um, but like with the safety mandates enacted in PA up until now, have you been able to operate your business at all? No, not really. Um, at first, we were going to be able to because even with the safety precautions, um, we typically at most only have, well, so our Point Breeze store, there's only one person who works there. So, you know, he could continue to do work. He's the only one there. In the strip district, we usually only have about two people there. But, um, and we were able to do pickups and drop-offs. So I was going to start doing, taking orders and like ha doing the orders via email or FaceTime choosing the framing, but um, we kind of got stuck because all of our vendors, our suppliers closed. So we order everything in custom per job. So all of our map board, glass, foam board, molding, we couldn't get anything. So because of that, um, and this is in the United States and Canada, our vendors. So because of that, we kind of got uh, stuck where we couldn't really do much. We took a couple orders for things that we had in stock that we could complete, but, um, that's about it. So. Yeah. Uh, I like us having the print side of things, not that it, we were completely like without options, but they, they became very limited. So I, I definitely get that. Yeah. Um, so has this sudden interruption of life provided you with any opportunities to work on like improving certain parts of the business or like developing a new aspect of it altogether? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've always said a hundred times, I wish I just had like a month with nothing going on that we could focus on like doing the, there's so many creative projects that we all want to try to do with in framing, but we never have the time when you're just going through your day-to-day -day orders. So this actually has like opened a door that we could work on projects that we've had on the back burner and try like 
airbrushing frames or you know doing more creative things that we maybe didn't have like a whole week to set aside to try things out so in that sense it's actually been um really nice it's been a good change right on uh so with with the shutdown like most small business owners i'm sure you've looked into taking advantage of like one aspect or another of the government stimulus package like it was yeah. ridiculous that it ever ran out for small businesses but they re-upped it and i guess they're still trying to work out a new one um mm -hmm. but have you been able to make any progress on that front no not at all we applied i applied for both packages the payroll protection and the economic disaster relief and um, I applied for both of them the first day they were ever available and um, never heard anything about the payroll one and never, I just got a response for the economic one just saying pretty much that it's processing, but that's oh, it. Oh, okay. We never received anything, barely even like a confirmation. So, I mean, I don't understand. And I've talked to a lot of other business owners that are exactly the same. And some of them have been, trying to keep their employees on payroll because part of the payroll protection is you have to keep your employees on. Yeah, you can't let anybody go. Right, but how is everybody supposed to be able to afford to keep all your employees on not knowing if you're ever gonna get this loan or not? Uh, it's really been pretty crazy. Yeah, uh, I, I think the only time, the only thing I've heard of where like they're kind of keeping you on, but they're not letting you go, but they're not paying you. They're, you know, they're furloughing basic. Mm -hmm. I have heard of like, that's kind of like a, a loophole, but mm -hmm. um, I just heard a tip the other day and like, not that, not that it's massively applicable, like at the immediate moment, but um, uh, to apply for the small business loans uh, with as many banks as you can, like you can obviously only accept it from one, but yeah. uh, just because of the weird processes that banks go through, they were like, well, don't actually just go through your preferred bank, apply to as many as you can. Each bank like has different, uh, different processing like systems and some mm -hmm. people can get through them faster than others. So that's, that's just a, for people out there, if they're yeah. super fed up. Apparently that's an option. Uh, I didn't really think about that until somebody said it, but that's a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And I mean, we're fortunate enough right now that, so I have only three employees. They um, all got on unemployment. And oh, that's so, good. Yeah. So they're actually taken care of in that sense. And so I'm, you know, just trying to cover the overhead um, just through savings and whatnot. So, you know, luckily right now I'm able to do it, but I wouldn't be able to for much longer. So it's amazing that they were able to get on unemployment. I'm actually really, uh, I'm really happy to hear that and also very impressed to hear that. Um, yeah. Has your communication with them slowed down a bit? Like, are you in st still like fairly constant contact? Um, yeah, we keep, you know, updating each other. Uh, one thing was with the unemployment because everybody got it at different times. So it was trying to, um, you know, first we paid vacation pay and then until the unemployment kicked in. And so then I've just been keeping in touch with them for that reason. And also just um, trying to, you know, form a plan of what's going to happen once everything gets back to normal, whenever that is. And so, yeah, we've been keeping in touch, but um, you know, not all the time. Right. Right. Um, just in general, like how have they been handling all this? Like all things considered is everything, is everybody like, weathering the storm fairly well? Yeah, I think pretty much um, in one sense, I think uh, everybody was, you know, happy to have a bit of a break. But, um, you know, my the one uh, guy, he has started to come back to work just to um, like pretty much refill his vacation time just because he's bored. <laughs> he's like, I just want to get back to work. So I'll come and do anything. So, you know, I think that um, everybody's kind of taking it differently. Um, one of our other guys is remodeling his kitchen. So, you know, but it's going to be strange because everybody is making probably more on unemployment since they're giving an extra $600 a week. Right. Plus, you get on your state unemployment. A lot of them are making more than they make normally. So, you know, it's, it's sort of flip-flopped where it's going to be 
I'm like, am I going to be able to get them to come back to work or nobody's going to want to come back. They're just going to want to stay on unemployment. Yeah. They'll just ride it out until the max. And then they're like, all right, well now we'll come back. Yeah. 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 This has been a crazy thing. Like everybody has been saying like they've been dying for a vacation of some sort. I just don't think that anybody wanted one just like this, you know, like it's uh, it's about the most extreme staycation as you could possibly get. I think it also makes you realize that like all the time you've been talking about, if I only had like two weeks uninterrupted, I'd get all this stuff done. And then you realize like, that's not the reason I'm not getting this stuff done. I just don't want to. (laughs) I have tons of projects here that like I, you know, should have been working on, but we're not. So (laughs) just whatever. Well, you and I uh, and your husband as well have had multiple Zoom interactions over the course of this. It's a slice of reality we're forced to accept so we can maintain our relationships. Yeah. That said, I know you well enough to know you wear lots of hats, a sibling, friend, spouse, daughter, all different relationships, all come with different concerns. Uh, just you as an individual human, like how are you doing and what I've come to call the static chaos in all of this? I'm doing pretty good. I actually like, in some ways, this has been really good for me because um, I tend to get really bogged down with my day-to-day work responsibilities and stress and, you know, just self-created stress. So this, and so a lot of times I sort of like, I'm, Everybody that knows me would say I'm hard to communicate with. I don't respond to text messages. I don't answer phone calls. And it's not because I don't want to. I just, you know, have too much going on. And so this has been really good for me because I've actually, like, reconnected with people more than I ever have. I've had time to, you know, Zoom or FaceTime where before I would never want to FaceTime anybody. So I think it's been good. I've talked to so many people I've actually talked to my mother about once a week, which usually it's like every three weeks. So um, I think in that sense, it's been a really positive thing for me. Well, no, you're, you're setting a bad precedent because they're going <laughs> to expect you to keep it up later. I know. I know. Trust me. I've thought about that, <laughs> but I think once uh, work goes back to normal, everybody's going to understand. Yeah. You're, you're dangling that good thing in front of them. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep up with it though. This is like, you know, what I needed to, realize it's not that it's not that hard to just like you know be more on top of calling somebody right well positive change man i'm i'm all for it i've been telling people from the start of this like if they can make themselves better for the other side of this that it 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 had like at least you were able to say that you used your time wisely i i I, it really bums me out to hear people say that they're being bored I know. I agree because it's like, yes, this is a bummer. Like nobody, you know, asked for this, but at the same time, it's like, this is also like a once in a lifetime opportunity to have uninterrupted time. So, you know, if you're fortunate enough that um, maybe either you're working from home or you could, you could get unemployment or, you know, you're able to get by, you're not struggling as much financially. um, You know, it's like, look at it positively. What, what can you get done? And, you know, who do you want to be become a better person when you, when all this is over and we come out of it. Could not have said it better myself. Um, and so I know you a little too well to ask, like if you've been doing anything fun with your time, like in my <laughs> experience, that's just a given with you. So what have you been getting into? Are you learning anything new? Or are you getting back to things you haven't had time in your know, time for in a little while? Like what's your, what's your fun Avenue now? say my uh fun avenue with the thing that's I guess surprised me is like this this whole quarantine I feel like I'm going back to my childhood state you know it's like sheet forts and pajamas and um as you probably know I'm somebody who I like to go out you know we like to go out and socialize a lot and so um we don't we never really did a lot of just hanging out at home or staying home and having fun and so we've uh, my husband and I are actually having a really good time just staying home and you know being lazy and like I said putting making a sheet for it and having a dance party and that kind of stuff it's like oh we we found out that we actually like each other yeah yeah (laughs) we've had a lot of fun (laughs) so between pretty much having time to do creative projects that have been on the back burner and then just um yeah spending some like nice 
time at home. It's been great. So I actually, I don't know if I have a good read on you with social media. I know your, your husband is a big voyeur. I don't know if you ignore it all together or not, but like while all this is going down, people have taken to social media to do some pretty like incredibly impressive things and like very selfless things. Mm -hmm. um, has anybody been standing out to, to you, like anyone worth shouting out and sending a little love their way? Um, well, I'll say, so this is kind of distant, but um, it's still interesting. Um, in New Orleans, there's a group, they're called the Red Beans Crew. And um, I say this because, well, Eli, you know how our love for New Orleans. And, I do. Uh, but eventually, if we, uh, we might start splitting our time there. And so it's a group we'd like to join. But they um, are a social club, and they do parades and stuff for Mardi Gras and whatnot. But uh, throughout this time, they've been uh, raising money and then um, going out and, like, ordering food. And every single day through this quarantine in New Orleans, they have been – delivering food to hospital workers and the amount they've raised the last time I checked, it was almost at like $400,000. And it's been, it, that was a weeks ago. So they just uh, stopped the program, but the New York times just did an article on them as well. So I think it's pretty exceptional that, you know, they're really stepping up just as a small community group and there's local cafes and bakeries and restaurants in new Orleans that have put on social media saying that like, the only reason that they were able to stay open through this thing was not because of any help they got from the government or, you know, either local or state, you know, government, but it was only because of this red beans crew that actually like were ordering such large orders and stuff and got them through. That's really kind of amazing. It's like a, like a, the, a charitable version of like a militia. Yeah. Yeah. That is it is. really <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and it's funny because a lot of these um, groups in New Orleans, you know, you kind of forget that they are social groups. You think that they're just, you know, Mardi Gras kind of like um, something to do for the parade, you know, a group to parade with. But uh, remembering that they're actually um, out there helping the community is is really cool. That's, yeah, that's pretty incredible. Um, so we wanted to use this as a way for people to connect a little more while we're forced to be so isolated. So like, before we bring this to like a total wrap, is there anything you want to ask the people watching? It doesn't have to be like super serious. It can be, but it can be silly. It can be whatever. What do you want to ask people? Um, I would like to ask people um, who some new artists that they've maybe discovered. I'm always looking to find new artists, either local or not. Uh, so, you know, maybe send me some, Tell me something that you're into in terms of some new artwork. That's what awesome. I'm always looking for. Or maybe what do you want to get framed after this quarantine? Uh, think about that. <laughs> I think everybody's sitting at home looking at their blank walls. So I'm hoping that afterwards they'll be like, okay, let's go get this framed. Well, I think that's the, the perfect pitch. But for everybody <laughs> listening, who are the artists that, you, that you've – I guess it doesn't have to be that you've just found out about, but who are the artists that you're digging? Uh, tag her, put it in the comments, do all the fun things like that. And uh, so they can tag you. Lastly, tell people where they can reach you, your website, your social media, all the things. Yeah, our social media. So like Eli said, I don't do too much social media personally, um, just because I'm lazy in that sense, but uh, I do follow, I do for um, work. So our social media tags, it's Framezilla PGH. And that's for Facebook or Instagram. And even our website is framezillapgh.com. All right. That's everything. Um, Amanda, awesome. You did great. Thank I you. Love having the drinks with you. We'll <laughs> have to make, well, I can't say that the next drinks that we'll have together will be in person because we've been actually interacting a decent amount since this is, yeah. this has all gone down, but uh, hopefully we can have drinks together soon. Soon, soon enough. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, take care, stay safe, stay sane and uh, cheers. <laughs>